So yesterday we discussed the subject matter that is connected with what influences us. It is about the sound we hear. Yeah? So now I'll discuss, we will discuss now the consciousness of a devotee. A devotee, the spiritual master whom we follow. So the process we follow is based upon us ourselves making a decision to be guided. So the spiritual master, Lord Krishna, comes and the spiritual master, he canvas through his work uh, disseminating the information coming from our instructing spiritual master and from Krishna, the Supreme Person himself. So he canvas, goes around through media, through different channels to communicate to individuals and offer a path, the science of devotional service. So the spiritual master follows the transcendental eternal science being taught by Lord Brahma and it's about us, the spirit soul, who are wandering in this miserable world, to have an opportunity to see our real situation and what influences us not to make this choice 
but rather follow another of path that is connected with our with our being encumbered or being really what we call ingrained or really suck in to this world of suffering. This is the ignorance of material disease we identify with the body. So the spiritual master comes as what we can read from scripture. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So he's blessed because he's connected with the pleasure, the desire of the Supreme Person. The spiritual master comes. And if, he, if we, are very, we are fortunate to come in contact with him, with the teachings, and that teaching is based upon our true, eternal, transcendental activity that we activity that we can engage in that will help us be free from this ocean of misery this desert world because we will be guided now to understand scientifically our true identity then we can weigh or gauge or what you call see clearly what makes me unhappy and afraid is the refuge, the conditioning, the activities we are engaging in. And it's centered around being focused in this material world. We try to find shelter in this material world which is continually changing and moving. And the spiritual master gives us Pass on to us the science of our true transcendental identity. And he gives us a process that will connect us with the will of God. So in this age of quarrel and confusion, yoga meditation or yoga sound comes descending. Yoga means union with God. And that union is in harmony with the will, the desire, the pleasure, of the Supreme Person. It is connected with our, what we're longing for, shelter, refuge, and happiness. So the difference between so-called religious fanaticism, so-called because it's not really religious, religious spirituality, is that they're so afraid, they're so afraid that they take something and put people or individuals like us into fear. Psychologically or in a case wherein you're put in a country where they force you to join the faith, their faith. Like what happened in, in the, in the, during the time wherein Iran or Kuwait, you know, if you are not following or you are not joining them in their faith, then they kill you. <laughs> so to survive, you have to follow. You played allegiance, yeah? So now what is taken from you is the freedom of choice. The freedom of choice. And because it's not transcendental, you have this worry in your heart, you're always afraid. You have no foundation for security. So that's the difference between the science that is descending because we are being given the science to see our situation. And then if we want, we can make a choice to follow this path, the path that is transcendental that is the will of God. It's not by force, but rather us, after traveling or staying in this body or for so long we've been here, 
We have no solution to our problems that we face. The problems we face is, to be very direct, is that we're longing for someone to love eternally. We're longing to, be, to experience this joy, this stability wherein I have refuge. That's the point. Let's not talk about so many, you know, mind-boggling words or, you know, nouns and adjectives. Let's be direct. It's about you looking for someone to love, someone to care, someone to offer your life, that you are not people that you'll get exploited. And that person, you can put your whole life under his care. And that is the supreme person, God. So when you come to this world, there are so many individuals putting up programs, you know, putting up programs. But there's material consideration. There's one thing that they're so, because they are not seeing and understanding that there is one thing that is, that take, that is always with us. What is that? The freedom of choice. What to do? So we are guided by scriptures, by the spiritual master. That choice must be the right choice. A transcendental choice connected with our eternal life. Because if we make a choice based upon material consideration, based upon false bodily identification, directed by the mind in pursuance to the desire through the senses and trying to find security through this temporary body, trying to perpetuate our, extern our existence here, then we have a problem. Because we're going to leave the body and all those shelter that we do have will be taken away from us. So very simple. It's not complex. Because you can see that whatever endeavor you do in this body to accumulate anything, you're going to leave it. Because you are not the body, you're going to leave everything that's connected with this body. Even relationship with this world, with the individuals, your father, your mother, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, the source of your security and happiness directed by material consideration, wherein your love is directed upon the forms of this world because of your conditioning of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, or ignorance. So it's very clear that the spiritual master, through this transcendental science, it is very important to understand the spiritual science and material science so we can check also, to protect us. So if anyone tries to take away this freedom, either psychological intimidation, or try to put us in a situation wherein we have no choice, that is fanaticism. Fanaticism is a conditioning, and those individuals who are fanatics, they take away your freedom. So the process they engage in is you join a group. Huh? You join a group. If not, there's repercussion. So you, if you make the choice to give your freedom to follow this group, and this group is not really completely in harmony with the purity of transcendence, then you have a problem. So to be safe, we have discussed yesterday about the sound. So the sound that we should hear must be based upon absolute, upon the will of God, which is eternal, which is connected with our love, our welfare, our well-being. So that saves us and protects us. You talk about yoga, you see yoga around, meditating, uh, talking about vegan, you know, vegetarian life. That is not what we are here for. We are here to assist you, to guide you, to pass on what has been given by Parampara and directed by the bona fide spiritual master to pass on the science that if you want to make a choice, you want to follow, you can follow. And we 
the science, when you see it, it's not threatening you. That if you don't follow, you're gonna be experiencing, you know, the wrath of God or, you know, the retribution. Yeah? Or the peer. You have no shelter. No, they don't do that. We, the, the, para, para doesn't, the, the spiritual master simply comes, pass on to you a process that will purify you from all this misgiving and encumbrances in your mind. Meaning the mind which has been directing you for so long, you begin to see now you're not the body because they give you a process. The holy names of God, which is the holy names of God, which is a process to draw the mind away from matter, a scientific process that will purify your heart, your mind. So when you engage in the yoga sound, which is completely opposite to the sound you have been hearing for so long, material sound that has been directed by the modes of ignorance, goodness, or passion that has put your lives into fear, to doubt, experiencing the pain of this world, wherein you are attached to something, following someone, and at the end, you never succeed and never achieve peace of heart and you are not really sheltered. So the process we follow is based upon making the right choice. So how can you make the right choice? So our process is based upon scriptures coming from God through the unbroken chain of spiritual master, Bhagavad Gita as it is. As it is, huh? because there's so many Bhagavad Gita that teaches contradictory to the teachings of God. They interpret it. Srimad Bhagavatam, all these teachings centered around the glorification of the Supreme Person, His holy names, His activities, and the world that is transcendental from this miserable world. And when we listen from someone who is a pure loving servant of God, there's an effect in our heart because we begin to long for what we're longing for, for so long that yes, I can give my heart, my life, and I can only do that to the Supreme Person. You only do that to the Supreme Person, not to anyone else, not to the organization. <laughs> you only give your life to God. So the process we follow is based upon the verdict or the tenets or the narrative passed on to us by our instructing spiritual master. In this case, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, the teachings of Sukadev Goswami, the teachings of Narada Muni, Lord Brahma, eternal teaching activities connected with our, what is inseparable from us, what we can be connected with the Supreme Person, our life, our love, that is inseparable from us, happiness, joy, because the soul, we, the living entity, we are the eternal soul, the person in this body. And the reason we are experiencing suffering because this body is, <laughs> we're encumbered in this body. And the mind that has really shackled us and the desire we follow because our love now is misdirected. So he gives, the spiritual master gives us this process to purify us, this yoga sound we do every day. So that is the simplest process that God himself God's affection and love, so we can be doing His will to be fulfilling His desire. Because the goal of life is to fulfill the desire, the will of God. The Supreme Person, the description of the Supreme Person is the cause of all causes. He's self-sufficient. He does not need us. But because we are limited, although we're spirit, soul, life, transcendental, by nature, by nature, all of you here, you want to love. You want to serve. You're gentle, you're kind. That's why you feel like sikhism in your mind wherein you do something bad in the beginning. Bad means simple. Or you do weird things. In the beginning, you feel a distaste. For example, like stealing. You get something that's not yours, you feel, uh, I think it's not right. But because you get conditioned, to do it every time, you become callous. It becomes natural for you. So your heart becomes hard. So the point is, our heart is so hard that we are trying very hard to find enjoyment in matter. 
And everything that's here belongs to someone. Everything animate or inanimate that is within this universe is on and controlled by the Supreme Person. Knowing well to whom they belong, one must use only the quota that is allotted to him. Quota. God, all of us, we have quota. We have a certain amount of happiness or distress we can be experiencing in this lifetime because of our karma. Meaning, if you want to experience happiness more than speculating, more than what you're experiencing now through sensual enjoyment, then it can only be realized or achieved, experienced according to your karma. For example, you're born very poor. No? You're born very poor and you try to work very hard. You know, work very hard. You make daytime, nighttime, daytime. But because of your karma, you will only receive a corresponding, the result of your, what endeavor you will be achieving is according to your karma. As you sow, you shall reap. And the experience of pain and suffering, you're going to experience that also according to your sinful activities of bad karma. So, the whole point is now, we are so entangled by all these forces, by all these forces, engulfing us. The good karma, the bad karma, what's in the mind, all the desires in the mind, and we are now out of control. But we think we are in control because we have been conditioned by material nature to do our own will, to pursue happiness in the wrong dimension, matter. So the purpose of yoga teaching, this yoga sound, is the descending process that is eternally going on, absolutely, that will purify us. And what our longing in our heart can be satiated or can be addressed, provided we follow. So the process we do and engage in is based upon the science and understanding the difference between matter and life. So when you, the living entity, us, try to find happiness or fulfillment in matter because we are a different energy, are automatically we become muddled or sucked in there. But we are not really experiencing refuge. Okay? And it's been going for so long, guided by the mind. So the first factor or the first element or what we should do is to control the mind. But how can you control the mind when you identify with the body and the mind? So the process of purification, this yoga sound purifies you. You become a witness. You can watch your body. If you really understand when you chant, you can understand that the, because you're there in the body, you're breathing. Yeah? You're not making effort to breathe. Who's making effort here to breathe? Except those who are Contaminated by the pandemic COVID-19. You know, their lungs being destroyed, you know, becoming full of water. <laughs> They're having a hard time to breathe. So to survive, they have to breathe. But actually, if you're in your, in your state, healthy state, you don't make effort to breathe, you know. You don't, <laughs> I have to breathe. I have to, no, it's ongoing. So what is the problem we face? We are not aware of our true identity. We're not aware. We're insensitive, meaning we become so callous. We're not even, and the, work, the activities we do engulfs us. Because we're now engaging in activities that is connected with the laws of karma, action and reaction. And what is that all about? It is because we want the fruits of our action. Whatever we do, we want the fruits of our action. Fruitive activity. Meaning, if I do something, I want to achieve the result and enjoy it. It's all about me. Yeah, fruitive. So, we teach individuals that spiritual life is beyond fruitive activities. Because it's connection with the cause of all causes. Fruitive activity is based upon your search for happiness. You endeavor so hard to get something directed by the mind, following the desire in the mind. And what happens? 
when you get it, you're still not fulfilled. That can be seen, you know. For example, here lang. Don't you notice every year there's new model of cars? Yeah? And don't you notice that? For example, I buy a car that is model 20, uh, 10 years ago. But every year there's new model, you know, coming out and projected. And they have this program wherein now it's about your macho driving this car that's so powerful, you know, that can run 250 miles, you know, RPM in what one second, it will be 60 kilometers per, per second. And I want that, you know. Your car is a jalopy, you know. It's 20 years old already, you know. And you think, oh, I want that. Then you buy it, you drive it. The next year, there's another one. Yeah? Oh, somebody, you think you're number one, you're top guy, you know, driving this car, looking at the people uh, walking, bicycling, wearing slippers, you know. I am the top guy, you know. You poor guys. And then somebody drives. <coughs> Who's that? And you look, another model. I want that. And then you have to sell it. But nobody will buy it. <laughs> and when you get that, same. You're driving. And then somebody pass by you. Oh, who's that? What is he driving? You know? And then you waste your time to work hard, to get money, to buy things, or to you know, sell your property or lend from the bank, you know, to be able to become an employee of the bank, working for the bank, paying all the interest for the rest of your life because of following the desire. Focusing upon getting something material. You understand? You loan from the bank, you become employee of the bank. <laughs> Do you understand that? You loan from card, you loan from... Look what the people... What <laughs> My friends here, bah, they don't need 30,000 pesos because they're surviving. But somebody comes with a scheme seeing you, you know? Oh, I'm gonna lend you 30,000. But for a layman like us, we're because we're very poor, uh, okay, 30,000, but I don't need 30,000. No, you get it, because when you get it, every week you pay, you have savings. You have savings. You know, when you have 30,000, they give you only about 25, because they're saying that the 5,000 goes to your saving already. Yeah, understand? And every month, every week you have to pay one eight, but actually, you're just, you're only paying 1,000, the 800 goes to their savings. And it, it's in our bank, you know. If you don't pay, your savings will be ours. So they put a scheme. And not only that, you don't need, why will you need 30,000 when you're surviving? For example, huh? you're surviving already, you go home, you eat meals with Janet, you relax, you know. Then you have 30,000 pesos. For a layman like me, I'm very poor. What will I do with this? Okay, I'll buy a new TV, you know. And you be joking, you know. Again, somebody, the company tells you, we can, you go to the Turco or to the Pipe 6, you know. We can give you TV. TV, bro, bro, uh, kuya, kuya. Yeah, yeah, kuya, we give you TV. Wow. One year to pay. The TV is only, the television costs only 5,000 pesos. But in, in one year, if you add carefully, it's about 20,000 pesos already. But we'll just get only 200 pesos a day from you, Kuya, for 10 years. Kuya, huh? So every day you see those Turko, oh, Kuya, Kuya, Kuya. Yeah? You understand? <laughs> Why? Why do you get entangled in this world? Because of the focus. Because of the search for happiness. Yeah, you understand? So the process we follow is not trying to let you join Madonna Moana. It is a science that you can understand to protect you because the sound is connected with what you're longing for. It's about your life. It's about the teaching of Allah, the compassion of Allah. It's about you doing His will, loving Him, serving Him. But now you ask this question amongst yourself. Whom are you serving? I know I serve 
I'm me mine, I'm me mine, I'm me mine. I'm the man, you know. It's all about you. That's why I advertising. It's all about you. It's all about you, man. Diba? Chisel yourself. Have a new hair. Instead of, you know, the, they're selling now, you know, uh, vitamins, shampoo with vitamins, you know, carrot, diba? coconut, and all this aloe vera and everything that's really healthy. But you don't eat it. You wash your hair. Diba? Because, you know, the, the, what they call that? Yung pininansya na, pla, na buhok? The riban, or they call plinancha, can be enhanced. It will shine. Diba? Why not just eat the carrots, the, uh, the coconut milk, the peanuts, the pistachio nuts? Diba? Why put it on your hair? <laughs> Why just buy a comb, you know? And wash your hair with aloe vera. Because you cannot eat aloe vera. <laughs> So my point is this, the science you are following is the wisdom, the truth, and it's a choice you can make because we laid out it upon you and then you can see, you ask, am I happy with my life? What I am doing? What are my activities? Huh? Where is it leading? The question is, where is it leading me every time I follow the dictates of the mind and my senses? Is it clear to you? So the point here is, the process we follow is not based upon panatheism. Panatheism is based upon force. And how do they force you? They threaten you. They take away your freedom. And it's based upon putting fear in your hearts. They're trying to tell you something, to achieve something that is not achievable, but in illusion they are able to convince you if you join them, you can achieve it. And if, you're not get, if you don't join them, then you're not with them, you're against them, you're against God. <laughs> and they force you. So the process we do and follow is based upon wisdom. It's a choice you can make. So the more you chant the holy names, the more you chant the yoga sound, you can become seers of the truth. You will be seeing with wisdom because the process we follow is Satchit Ananda. Transcendental, understanding your transcendental nature as life, different from matter, and cheat, wisdom about the glories of God, the holy names that will purify you so you can see your situation, that you don't belong to this world. But if you are so much diseased, you think you belong to this world. Eh, you sing, we are the world, you know. We are the world, we are the people, and you hear songs like, imagine all the people, you sing like that. <laughs> no solution. So the solution is to be able to make the right choice. Because that choice, God did not take that away from you. Huh? Diba? You were put, we were put in a situation now, the Supreme Person, you ask this question why you're here. Because God, the Supreme Person, you come to this world because you, don't, you want to do your own will. But because you're not God, you're not the Supreme Protector, you are in not self-sufficient. Whatever you do, you're responsible for your action and you're responsible for the result. For example, you touch fire, you get burned. Ma? For example, what we tell the kids here. No close contact with, you should not associate with boys. The girls, we tell them, you should not engage in nonsense talk. You know? What is, what are nonsense talk? It's about animal talk. We tell them, like, usapan tao ba yan? What is, what is animal talk? Eating, sleeping, mating, and depending. What is eating? The dogs do that. The pigs do that. You know? The kangaroo do, does that. You know? Sleeping. The crocodile sleeps. You know? The turtle sleeps. You know? Fighting. You see there? The dogs fight for their place. And having contact. Having sex. Eating, sleeping, mating, fighting, and having sex. So that is not what we are discussing here. So we are discussing not animal life, because animal life has put us into animal existence that is causing us so much pain. For example, the kids, we tell them, okay, you should not associate with boys, because you are not, what will happen is that you get conditioned, and after that you're going to do something that 
you know, we will be disastrous to your life. Yeah. So the process we follow is based upon freedom. The spiritual master gives you this choice because if you are put in a situation where that freedom is taken away from you, will you be happy? Will you be happy when somebody force you? So fanaticism, in short, it's about raping you. What do a rapist do? He forces himself to you. Diba? What is a rapist? Someone who forces himself. I love you, I love you, I'm gonna rape you. You understand? <laughs> I'm just bluntly, directly talking to you, no? So a fanatic is someone who's not seeing our free will, who poses himself as God. Not only that, he is his own will, not in harmony with God's will. He's always afraid, so he relates to you as a product, as a commodity, as someone who will be under his jurisdiction and try to control you according to his, the influence of lust or the three months of material nature because he's thinking, he, you know, things will go awry. I have to control you, you know? So it's... That's the difference between the process we're doing. The choice you can make. With this process of fanaticism where they rape you, take away your freedom through psychological intimidation. And they're, you know how psychological intimidation, they portray themselves as very holy, you know, very holy because, you know, we are the confidential or we are the representative of God. But they take away your freedom. You join them, that is not our process. If we, if a person is doing that, meaning he's not doing the will of God, he's not the representative of God, because the spiritual master assists us to be in harmony with what is inseparable from us, loving and doing the will of God. So what separated us from that decision making? It is the disease of materialism. It is the false ego when we think we are self-sufficient. We want to do everything on our own. We want to live on our own with no one else but my will. That's a false ego trying to play Lord. But because we're not God, we'll never be happy. So the process that the spiritual master, Parampar, is giving is the purificatory process that purifies the mind purifies this callousness in our heart because the living entity is by nature you, all of you you want to serve and love by nature you're gentle by nature you're pure but because of material contamination this caring, this love, this compassion the fruits of love the sadness for seeing others unhappy is now covered by this force of lust so the spiritual master gives us this science to purify our consciousness by following this process, the yoga sound. You understand? It is a choice you can make. Or if you are not, re if you are lazy and you're blind and you don't want to take effort, you can just join the organization so they can rape you. You understand? Is it clear to you? So the science of bhakti yoga or devotional service is transcendental to this material conditioning, transcendental to all this so called religious fanaticism and personal fanaticism of those demons who are trying to take away your freedom so they can enjoy you, manipulate you, thinking that pointing to you, you're spiritual, you're with a group. But there's something you should watch. He's taken away your freedom and that freedom is always respected and that freedom when it is pure and directed upon the Supreme Person when a person comes to the point as what Jesus Christ did when he prayed, my dear Lord, let this cup pass as you will. I commend my life into your hands. So he made that choice, that freedom to give his life to God. So he is the per perfect ideal Example, whom we should follow and emulate. Not this joining. Not this so-called religious fanaticism of trying to portray purity externally and the security is about material consideration. 
and they enhance what separates you from God. You become a fruitive worker, even in the path, supposedly, of pure devotional service. You want something. But because it's transcendental, you know, the science of bhakti yoga, you can be purified. But there's danger if you follow people, individuals, who are materialistic, who are not really transcendental in consciousness. Just like being portrayed as holy. Have you seen those people trying to portray themselves, hiding, you know, under the guise, you know, the holy grail of purity, you know, of joining the organization, of being, being the confidential, and they portray it. So what happened to those OP people who just build the shell of a saintly person? They try to build the shell. It's about control, following their senses. It's a science that's very important that we should follow to be protected by the truth, by the wisdom. Or else you misuse your life. You'll be sad always. You'll be unhappy. Because Krishna loves you so much. The spiritual last master loves you so much. He loves us. He wants us that we will be in harmony with that world. So he gives us this wisdom so we can be guided by the truth. So we can make a choice, the right choice. So now you can ask yourself, am I able to make the right choice and apply the truth? It's hard because I'm following the mind. I have so much attachment to this world. And I have read that whatever state of mind one remembers at the time of death, that state he will attain. As you sow, you shall reap. Oh, I'm not all powerful. But a process that is given to us, the science of devotional service, the science of pure love, Begins with hearing and chanting, offering prayers to the Lord, serving the Lord, bowing down to the Lord, remembering the Lord, surrendering to the Lord. So when we follow that process, this impurity in our heart, we can now be conditioned spiritually to be resituated in our natural position and function, to be loving God, to be focusing. And the mind is diverted. That is the science wherein we can be in control of our life which is completely connected with the freedom of choice to do the will of God. Is it clear to you? Is it clear? You have any questions? You want to get clarified? So my point is this. We have always the freedom. But because we are not self-sufficient, we are not God, we are not all-powerful, there is a force that covers us. It is about the false ego, the lordship, dictated by the three months of material nature. That's why we have this body. So meaning, we are shackled in this world. How to get out of this world? Just like a spider who's watching us, and the spider world, the insect, us, gets stuck to this world with all our senses and following the mind and the desire. We cannot get out. We're drowning, nobody. You're drowning in the ocean of bird dead. This is a knowledge. You're drowning, and you're alone. You're in the desert, walking, no way out, and you're thirsty. You're not thirsty spiritually, you're dying. So, the spiritual master, Krishna's love comes with this wisdom. And that wisdom purifies you from all this encumberment. It cuts off the shackle and you can understand, yes, I'm eternally the loving servant of God. The search for happiness I'm longing is transcendental, not material, but connected with my life. And I've been misusing this freedom. I've made the wrong choice. You understand? The wrong choice. Because God loves us. And the choice can be with clarity in the right direction. So the first step in the right direction is to follow the instruction of God. And the instruction of God is coming down from the bona fide spiritual master who is his representative. So Lord Krishna tells us, one must search out a bona fide spiritual master. Surrender unto him. Render loving service. Inquire from him submissively. He can guide you because he sees the truth. And by the mercy of Lord Krishna, one comes in contact with a bona fide spiritual master. And by the mercy of our instructing spiritual master, written all the qualification of a bona fide spiritual master. Their lives, their activities, the science of understanding and knowing 
the absolute truth, the purity of that love through the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. So we can make that right choice, provided we make this decision to follow. We make effort. Nobody will make that for you. Nobody will make that for you. You have to take the walk. Yeah? You have to take the walk. You have to do it. And how to do it? Because we are really blind, we are crawling, not able to move. The spiritual master embraces us. Because the spiritual master is a spiritual doctor. Through his teachings, entering our ears, purifies our heart, opens our spiritual eye, our intelligence becomes purified. We can watch the mind. We can see the three modes of material nature affecting our body. We become the witness of this body. We see ourselves encumbered in this body and the direction we are heading now. Is it the direction into oblivion? It is a, a direction into darkness or a world of death? Then if we can understand this is based upon ignorance of false bodily identification. That's why the truth will set us free. Free to make the right choice. So the spiritual master does not force you. Why will he force you? You're already encumbered. And anyway, you'll always be servant of the Lord. You either serve the Lord with a heart of love, of surrender, amiable, of trust, of longing to do His will, or you'll be serving the Lord when you decide to do your own will under the jurisdiction of material nature, guided and forced by the senses and the mind because you identify yourself with His body. You think you are now the senses, then you're doomed, but you still be servant. That is our situation. So spiritual life is about wisdom of clarity and a choice that will free us. So if you want to become free, you can sing the song, born free, you know? Or you'll be a born loser because you come here with nothing, you're gonna live with nothing. So what is that process? So Lord Krishna tells us here, Krishna's heart, Krishna's mind, the Supreme Person, He tells us. There is no servant in this world more dear to me than He, nor will there ever be one dear. So Lord Krishna tells us, saints are my heart and they are in my heart. I'm always thinking of them. And the devotee, the science that we are being taught, when we chant the holy names, we come to the point that we're always thinking, meditating upon the love, the care of the Supreme Person. And at the time we leave this world, and even in this world we're thinking of Him, we're inseparable from Him in that harmony, transcendental to this miserable world, wherein we have achieved success to do the will of God. So that is the choice we can make. So I'll stop here and let's uh, have a chant so we can have clarity of mind and be focused upon the transcendental names of the Supreme Person that takes away this callousness in our heart that we can experience the gentleness of the spirit soul, the kindness, the compassion, the love, the happiness we're longing for. Haribol Namaste. Oh, yeah.
Ananda Paramahamsa Ananda Paramahamsa 
Namun sinasurupan anda Para mahal sana 